Katie and I are there probably more than anyone. And, yes. Um, so feel free to come by, and I have because I have a lot of uh, variety of work on on show there. All right, about my work. I am a collage artist, paper collage artist. Um, I brought a piece that I just finished, and I'll show it around so you can see. Um, my work tends to look like paintings because that's what I studied in undergraduate. My art training was in watercolors. I realized I was not going to be the world's next great watercolorist, and so I went on and did other things. I became an attorney and, you know, a variety of things. Um, and even though this doesn't pay as well, being an artist, I'm going to live longer now that I'm not an attorney, so that's a good thing. So I just finished this piece, and um, I work, like I said, I work all in paper. This is, um, I've ordered a frame for it. This is from my trip to China. I kind of have two avenues for my work. The larger pieces I work on um, that are bigger than maybe 12 by 12 inches, the, the ones that are larger, I tend to be based on my travels. Um, I'm lucky enough to have traveled all over the world, including Africa and Asia and a lot of Europe. So a lot of my snapshots get turned into art. So this was from a little town, they call it a water town because it has a lot of canals, We're near Shanghai in China. Um, so I just finished that one. I wanted to show you what my finished work looks like. My other kind of lane I'm in, and where, frankly, most of my income comes from, is um, smaller pieces that are, I call them illustrations. Um, I didn't bring one, but I know there was one on the newsletter. It showed the little sloth holding the Winnie the Pooh bear. I call those illustrations. They tend to be 12 by 12 inches, maybe even a little smaller. And um, I do those for fun, and they also help advertise my other sideline, which is doing pet portraits. Um, I do pet portraits um, and send them all over the world, thanks to Twitter. Um, so I've sent them to New Zealand and France, and people hire me not because I can do a super realistic portrait of their pet. They would want an oil colorist or someone like that. They like my whimsical approach. So a man in France wanted his dog and his cat at a French cafe, and the cat had to be wearing a hard hat, and the dog. And, I, mean, so I get all these long stories, because you know we all love our pets. And it's really fun, and it turned out really cute. So I do, I've done dogs at pubs. I've done, you name it, I've done it. Um, with pets. And so um, most of my income actually is from online sales, which is a whole other subject I'd be happy to talk to you about one day. Um, so like I said, I studied uh, watercolor color painting. So I learned a lot of important things that you all know uh, about composition and even things like um, I always can hear my watercolor teacher saying, okay, things in the distance are cooler colors, things close up are warmer colors. I still, I just, my point is that I apply all the painting techniques I learned to my, um, my collage. And it just so happens that um, I like to work with paper. And I collect paper and use all kinds of paper. So I'll start with the different kinds. Some of you will recognize just your average um, scrapbooking paper. I've bought books and books when they're on sale at Michael's um, because even if I don't like the color on front, I'll turn it over and use the white. So I can always use it. So I have gobs of scrapbooking paper. I also use maps. I happen to like this blue for a project I'm working on now, so I'll probably cut it on this map. Um, I've used paper bags. I use a lot of what I call art papers. You can get them at Blix Art Materials. They have some, but these days you can get anything you need on, online. If um, any of you work with mixed media and like paper, there's a, a site called it's called Mulberry something. And um, it, they have paper, and they divide it up by, oh, paper from Thailand, paper from here, paper from there. You get a really good image of it, so you know what you're getting. And that's a really good source for a lot of these papers. I've also used a lot of origami paper, because they have really cool patterns. And when I'm working small, the scale of the print on the origami paper is more befitting of the small scale. So as you can tell, I, I give this a lot of thought, and I also just collect every piece of paper I can find. In fact, my funniest story I'll tell you here is that I have another piece from China. I brought home some paper that has Chinese writing all over it. I have no idea what it says, and I used it on the background of this piece. <laughs> Someone pointed out, well, if somebody who reads Chinese might come in one day and say, uh, it's Chinese porn. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> or it might, it's pro most likely it's propaganda. <laughs> but, um, because we saw a lot of that in China. Um, so I just collect and collect. I, one time I wish I'd brought a piece. Um, again, the sloth picture that I know went out on the email. Um, 
the paper that I used on the arms was this fibery, weird paper that I found somewhere when I was traveling. I don't even remember where. I bought it years ago. And I said, someday I'm going to need this. <laughs> and I'm doing a picture of a sloth. And I was like, I know, I have sloth arms here somewhere. <laughs> um, so I do all my work on stretched canvas. So um, when I'm working on small pieces, I just go with the really cheap ones because it doesn't matter. I They're so encased in glue. Um, just the... Um, I don't know, the quality of the canvas hardly matters to me. I could do this probably on anything, on boards or you know whatever, but I happen to like uh, to work on stretch canvas. When I work on larger pieces, um, I try to get I try to get a little more reinforced. You know, I, I get better quality canvases the larger I go. So that's how I work. And then, um, since I spoke about commissions, I'm going to show you this one. Um, I found some really cool night sky paper at Blix. And I'm using it because um, there's a woman in England, I've done a piece for her before, and she now, <laughs> she liked it so much, she wanted me to do a slightly larger piece that's going to have five of her dead cats, um, <laughs> not looking dead, she wants them dancing around in the garden at night. She wants to remember them and think of them as like, playful and coming alive at night, but, but they are in fact all deceased cats. Um, and it's not the first time I've done someone's memorial to a, a dead animal. <laughs> I, you, you have to understand, I love cats. I love dogs. And so I'm being funny, but it's not uh, It's not because I'm totally irreverent. Um, but so this, this background, I've got nothing down here yet. And sometimes what I do bef before um, I even start is I'll take and I will cover, I think I did with this one actually. This is going to be a bluebird, and I'll work on that too. Um, on this one, I sometimes I'll take some white paper or just the back of some scrapbooking paper and cover the whole thing as prep in just white. I don't have to do that uh, because everything's going to get covered up anyway, but sometimes if I think I want to leave some white showing through, I'll do some white in the background. Now this is going to be a nighttime picture, so I think it's going to be um, pretty well covered up. I will show you um, what I'm working from so far. She has only sent me two pictures of the cat, so I can't work on the cats today, but um, I still have to put it in the background anyway. She sent me this, let's see if I can orient it a little larger. She sent me this gorgeous picture of a garden in England. It has a little bench and a, isn't that pretty? So this, is, I'm gonna work on some of the background trees. Um, just like, well, I don't know if it's just like painting. It's been so long since I painted. I don't even own paints anymore. But I always work from the background at, um, from the far away things forward. All right, that makes sense, right? With paper, you want the stuff in the back down first because you're going to cover it up. Sometimes I change my mind and mess up, and you know, it's paper though. I can find an opaque, opaque piece of paper and just cover it up. I have also been known to take my scissors and scrape off stuff I didn't like. <laughs> so it's not quite as uh, malleable as maybe oil paints, but I find my ways to make changes if I don't like what I've done. And sometimes it's hard to know. You'll see with the glue that I use, it goes on very thick and white. I can't tell what it's really going to look like until it dries. So I'm, I usually work on several pieces at the same time. And uh, this is my favorite tool, by the way, iPad. If you know, oh, some sort of tablet. That's how I pull up all the pictures that people have sent me. Here comes a cough, sorry. <coughs> You're going to have to spray this with Lysol or something. I'm sorry. Um, so the next thing I'll tell about before I get started is the glue I use. Um, when I first started, I used Mod Podge, um, you know, just because it's a nice thick glue. But I don't, I didn't trust it to stay clear and never yellow and that sort of thing. So um, I've trusted Golden um, brand for pretty much everything. I bet a lot of you use their products. Um, this is soft gel gloss, and I use gallons of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Soft gel gloss. It's made for acrylics. I mean, you know, it's super thick, and you'll see it when, I, when I'm gluing. Um, I usually buy it in, I've bought it in big buckets, but my studio is small, so I'm using small oh. containers at the moment. Um, and when I'm all done, I've already put it on that piece. Um, when I'm all done, I use another golden product. I cannot remember the actual name of it. It's a polymer varnish, and it has UV protection in it. So I put, it's, it goes on very thin, and I usually use about, can you still hear me? I'm just mm -hmm. hearing okay. a little feedback. Um, what's that? You brush it on? I brush it on, because it's self-leveling, so it'll level itself out. It usually, you know, I sometimes go over it with my fingers to make sure there's no bubbles. Um, I, I brush it on. I didn't bring it today, but um, I just buy little jars of it, because a little goes a long way. Do you dilute that? 
I don't. You can't. I know. Because it is water-based. Yeah, it's water-based. And I, when I've used it, it says about diluting it. So I've always diluted it, but you don't. I never do. Okay. Um, and it again, it dries crystal clear yeah. and lovely. I use the shiniest, shiniest, glossy stuff I can because I like shiny, pretty, glossy pictures. <laughs> but also because the gloss um, helps... Um, bring out the texture of the paper. It reflects all the little edges of things. So um, gloss is much better than matte for um, paper art, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I just brush it on. I usually do three coats at a minimum, sometimes four. Um, because again, it's paper. And even if I use the best quality paper, it can fade. And so I want to protect it for as you know, long as possible. I have some work that's 15 years old and has not faded at all. Because and that was before I used this. Because it's gloss. Mm -hmm. Do you do you have to do anything in between coats? One one glossy coat will stick to the next glossy coat. It sure will. Okay, mm -hmm. great. That's mm -hmm. oh, the best stuff. It mm -hmm. really is, and it goes on really nice and thin, so it's just easy to work with, and and you you can dilute it. I just don't because I want all the UV protection I can possibly pack in there. So, um, paper, um, paper, canvas, glue, and Varnish. Those are my ingredients, and then water. Now, when I um, I'm going to work on this piece because I've got this nice garden, and I want to do a kind of a darker. Um, I don't know what. I, it looks like I cut leaves out of this one at one point. Um, I always talk about my paper in terms of hard and soft paper. So. This it would be a hard paper. Most of the scrapbooking papers, I call it hard in my head. It, it if you cut it, it, has a real hard edge, and it's not you know fuzzy at all. Um, some of the art papers I use are um, what I call soft. They're not tissue paper soft, but when you when you tear them, they make a really nice little fuzzy edge. Okay, so I like to use a combination of hard and soft paper and a combination of hard and soft edges. Hard being cut edges and soft being torn. And I think that maximizes the texture. You just, you don't see it maybe unless you, and unless I point it out, but I see it and I feel it. So I feel like that's important. Do you ever use tissue paper? I have used tissue paper. The reason I got into using paper at all is because my mom used to do, um, tissue paper collage when I was growing up. And that was all the kind of art paper there was. Um, now, the tissue paper fades terribly. And so I just don't use it unless, I shouldn't say never. Sometimes if I'd use it, I will put maybe six layers of it. So that even if the top layer fades a bit, it's, yeah, and it, it, there's the, I worry about the fading. Um, now, sometimes the bleeding tissue paper can cut, make some really neat techniques. I mean, it can look really great, but that's just not, it's not what, what I do. If I were doing sort of more abstract, I would maybe consider it. But I get asked if I make my own paper a lot. And the truth is, I would be interested, except it's very time consuming. And it would take too much time away from creating the images. And I just love creating the images. As much as I love paper, I prefer to buy other people's homemade paper. So if any of you are paper makers, I might be one of your best customers. <laughs> Seriously, especially if I can find something that's totally unique. All right, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna see what this looks like ripped. I'm doing it a bit upside down. I'll show you. <clears throat> Camera, can you see me? Um, well, let's get started. I don't have to be really precise because I can add, you know, if I feel like this is not really as big as I want it. Um, and it probably isn't, but actually I might have that one go right up against the edge. All right, so I just cut. This one's got some, this is a kind of hardish paper, but when you tear it, it, it you can see it has different edges. That'll look different once it's all glued and dried. And <clears throat> the way I apply glue is messily. But that's what I love about it. It reminds me of when I was in kindergarten and that's all they let us have for art supplies was paper and glue and I made the most of it and I kind of never left. Um, so I just use a paintbrush made for acrylics if anybody wants to know. Any kind of paintbrush will work but it's a you know flat tip. And I just, um, I paint it on, and I'm sorry, I have to work flat, so you can't see what I'm doing, but I think you can probably imagine. And um, so I put a lot of glue down. Like I said, I go through tons of this glue. And I'm just gonna have this be one of the bushes in the background that goes all the way up to the top. And then 
And after putting glue down, I put glue all over the top. And that's what I mean, layer after layer, there is tons of glue on this thing. And I'm a stickler for no bubbles. I can't stand bubbles. There is actually no law that says there can't be an air bubble under your, you know, there's no, no rules, but it just bugs me. So I tend to really go through a lot of paintbrushes too because I'm always putting tons of pressure on them to, to work those air bubbles out. And then what happens is after I put a piece down, you can, just, you can see it's all white and messy and I have to wait till it dries before I could really do much more with that section. Um, sometimes I will layer on more than one layer, never more than two because I worry about it really getting totally dry in there. Um, but I, what happens is like if I were working at this in my studio, I'd then say, okay, maybe I'll work on this bluebird for a minute, see how this looks, and then I have to babysit it. And that, that just means watching for bubbles and crinkles in the paper. And so I end up just using my fingers and I get it all over me. And so um, not a well-kept secret at our house. I'm always picking glue off my fingers just no matter how often I wash my hands. In my car, my steering wheel column, I apparently do it while I'm driving because there's like little white crispies. It's just, it's awful. Makes me laugh though. All right, so for the... Oh, um, I showed you that one. So now I'm, this, this is actually going to be a blue jay. Um, it's going to be two blue jays when I'm done because I'm told the blue jays train in Dunedin. And I thought, well, I, I did a piece with, um, with um, cardinals. And it was one of my most popular pieces, cardinals in the snow. And I thought, well, I'll do blue jays in the snow. I got asked every time, um, this time of year last year, people were like, oh, do you have blue jays? You know, because we root for the blue jays. So, um, caving to pressure, I'm going to, I'm going to show you something else I, I commonly do. Okay, so I decided, oh, this is actually paper. See how the, the fence here? It's from a big sheet of crisscross, very wood grainy paper. I don't even remember where I got it. I think it's at a Sarasota art store, actually. My daughter used to go to school down there, and so I'd go to that art store sometimes. So that is actually paper, but it's, it's not very far from its origin as wood. Um, anyway, I thought that was really cool paper, so I was saving it for this piece. Now, for, for Blue Jays, I just um, Googled Blue Jays and found one that is sitting in the right way. And I never worry about um, copyrights and trademarks and things like that because I'm not reproducing this picture. I'm, I'm using it as the basis of my blue jay, but all blue jays look like that, and I'm just using it for the pose, <laughs> you know? Now, I would never take a picture like this and do the exact thing. It's sitting on that tree, you know what I mean? That would be pushing it. The rules are, just so you know, I used to be a lawyer, you know. Um, the rules are, as long as you substantially change what you're looking at, you're not infringing. I never am because nobody will look at my blue jay and say, oh, I know exactly what photo she was looking at. Because it ain't going to look that much like this one when I'm done. <laughs> but it just gives me the idea of the pose. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is show you another thing I do. I don't ever draw out my pieces. Uh, so I get asked that a lot. Do you draw it first? I don't. I've been doing this for a long time, so I just look at the picture and I just cut. And I usually try to cut large, and I've already got a little bit of the blue jay kind of here, but I'm going to, for demonstration sake, I will cover him up. Um, so I always start a little bit larger than I think it's going to need to be, and then I just trim it down. But I've been doing this so long that apparently I can talk and do it at the same time because I'm because <laughs> here I am doing it. Um, so I end up with bits and paper all over my studio. Um, but instead of drawing, what I do sometimes is it's kind of like um, a layout. So, you know, the blue jay is going to be blue. He's going to have feathers and stuff. But sometimes I'll do in white or, you know, some other neutral color. Um, I will do um, just as sort of a guide. And sometimes I do that because, okay, that's how I know how much he's, room he's going to take up here, and then I'm going to want another blue jay up on this limb, and it helps me balance, you know, even, um, I might even work on some other part of the piece, but it helps me remember how much room that's, this bird's going to take, and so I do that sometimes. I do it often when I'm doing commissions and trying to get the general shape and gestures of a person's pet, because um, filling in the right colors is easy, getting the right I don't know. I don't know how to put it. Getting the right, you know, feel and gesture and everything is, is more important. And so I work on that sometimes in, just in white first. So 
there you can see. And white glue on white paper is really not a big deal. Um, when I'm done with a piece, when I like when I just finished that one recently, um, I sign my name using a sharpie, and so that's the only non-paper thing on there. And then I um, I put several coats of glue on before I finish it with um, the varnish because I learned the hard way. I had a nice finished piece that um, here I am babysitting this piece now. You'll know exactly what I mean. I see a bubble and it's bugging me. Um, I learned the hard way. I had a sort of light colored piece of um, of uh, scrapbooking paper and it was a real lightweight piece of paper you know probably something like like this just you know light paper and it was not thoroughly encased in glue and when I went to put on the varnish the varnish seeped under and darkened and stained that paper now that was a drag but I had more of the paper and I just cut out some more and glued it on and then put lots more glue and then I learned that you have to make sure so the last thing I do before I put on varnish is several coats of glue and I even run my brush in all the directions so that I'm catching the lips of paper yeah. so that it seals that up so that the varnish can't slip underneath. Yeah. How long do you let it dry? How long does it have to dry? Um, actually not as long as you might think. Um, usually in about 20 minutes. Um, if it's just okay. if it's just one so piece of paper. Before you put the varnish it's 20 minutes? Oh, um, no, When I because I'm usually slopping it on super thick. No, I just mean like this would probably be dry in about 20 minutes. But when I put it on, no, I let it dry really good. Yeah, maybe half a day. I might do two coats, one in the morning, one in the evening. Um, and with the varnish, same thing. The varnish dries actually really quickly. Do you find that? Um, it dries really quickly. Sometimes I can go just in an hour and put another coat on. You ever use a brayer? A what? A brayer. I don't even know what that is. Oh, a roller, a roller thing? Yeah. Oh! You can put a book under that or magazines and make it hard. Yeah, but you need non-stick something that will be non-stick over that before you but, but, Yeah, I was just going to say that glue would get all on there and it'd just be... And then I'd have to drive home picking at the barrier instead of my fingers. <laughs> no, you, have to, yeah, you have to use, like, uh, what's that paper for baking? Parchment. Oh, parchment, parchment or something, yeah. Plastic plastic. Yeah, that's a really interesting yeah. idea. I hadn't thought of using a tool for that. And it, it, part of it might be because I just really like getting glue all over my hands. I just, to be really honest, it's like people who work with their finger paints and stuff. I just kind of like it. Um, I'm sure... My housemates, my husband and daughter, are probably just used to finding bits of glue everywhere. <laughs> yeah. That you like a scraper, just to make sure the bubbles are out, and then. That's a good idea. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you for that. All right. Are there any other questions? Yes. 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 Um, I order all my frames online these days um, from American Frame. I don't know if any of you have used them, but they're really reasonable, and they ship pretty quickly. And I've gotten in the habit of framing all of my small pieces with the exact same um, box frame, you know, that you just turn them over and drill in the screws, and it's super easy, and they just float in there. Like a floater. It's a floater frame. Um, I don't usually have much float around the edge. Sometimes I do, but generally I like them to fit kind of just neatly yeah. in there, because uh, that's the easiest thing in the world. Now, for this piece, um, I did a whole series from my China. Um, some of you have, might have seen, if you've been to my studio, you'll have seen a couple um, that are bigger. I did a whole series, like nine of them. And they all had kind of a gold and black frame on them. So for this one, I ordered, a, it's a float frame, it's black, but it's gonna have on top gold. Because I've got gold in the water, and, and I thought that'll, I, I think that'll look nice. And that's sort of vaguely Asian, I think, so. That's what I'm doing with that one. But usually I just order black float frames, and I usually order, because I work so often in 12 by 12 for my commissions and things, I order four or five of them at once and saves on the shipping to order them in bulk that way. But I love American Frame, and um, I've never had a problem with any of their frames. The quality is usually pretty good, and they often run sales. Any other questions? Yes? Um, yeah, Blue Jay. Mm -hmm. Blue Jay, you put the white body on. Uh-huh. Okay, and now are you going to put another paper over the top? I sure am. In fact, I'll do that right now. Um, I saw this origami paper. I'll walk a little closer. This origami paper has like little blue flowers and stuff in it. I thought that would be an interesting for the wings. For the, the wings are kind of blue and white and different colors, but instead of trying to just cut out little pieces of paper, I thought I would try using some of this. So I'll do that. 
Because you see, I'm, th I'm looking at this part of the blue jay. And again, oops, that's my cat. Um, where it's all, you know, different colors and shades. I thought I would try using some of this. And if I don't like it, I'll cover, cover it up. But I think it might look kind of cool. And although um, I do very representational work, my work is not at all abstract, I do like to have surprises. Like if you look closely, you'll see one piece I did, I, I put um, sheet music in it. So some of the windows in some buildings and things are made out of sheet music because the town is Tallinn, Estonia, and they have a rich um, heritage in choral music. They have a big choral music festival every year. and So I do things like that. I like to put little Easter eggs, I guess you call them. Um, so I don't know if this would count, but I think that this will look really pretty. And the question will be whether I have enough to do it, but let me put on a few pieces and we'll see how it looks. I think it's going to look really neat. Um, I get asked sometimes, you know, I don't, I don't teach classes because I, I just don't have the time and I'm, I don't think I'm really a good instructor, but I do like to do a demo now and then, and I'm never worried showing other people my art. You know, um, my mom taught me how to do this, and she would never, ever teach anybody how she did her tissue paper collage. <laughs> never. Because I think she mistook the, the medium for her talent. She did really beautiful work. Nobody else was going to do anything like hers. And imagine if the person who invented oil painting said, no, I'm the oil, only oil painter in the world, you know? It, the medium is, you know, what you do with it is, is what's different, makes everyone different. I don't expect to see people cre recreating my work, so I'm not afraid to share. I mean, I'm just, I'm just starting with the blue, but I think that's going to be really neat as the feathers. And then I think what I'm going to do for above, there's a kind of like a shoulder. I don't have the perfect blue, but I kind of like this one, so I think I'll probably... At least start with this one. This is a real shaggy paper. So I'm going to cut these edges. Will you post online when you get these finished onto the website so that we can see the finished product? I will. And you know what? Um, Stoney can help me make sure you guys all see it. Thank you so much. Yeah, I know. So I'm just starting to put the, the kind of the shoulder in there. And I don't know if I'm going to like that color or not. It's not, I think it should be um, a more royal blue. So I'll show you what I do when I decide, no, I really don't want to use that. I just, <laughs> so. So, so there you go. Now you see, now you saw what a mistake looks like. Nope, that's not going to work. It's pretty, but it's not the right blue. Um, I'm not even sure I own the right blue. I might have to, you know, head to Michael's and buy yet another pad of paper. Um, because I brought all these blues, and none of them feel like quite exactly the right blue for the shoulder of that bird. But that's, I'm just particular that way. Have you ever added paint to the paper to get the blue you want? I never have. Uh, well, I never have, and there's no reason I can't. And I, there's no reason I can't do mixed media. Of course I can. I have a degree in painting. Um, but I just, I resist it. I like to be able to tell people everything you see, including the little faces and everything is all paper. Um, and I just, I don't want to have to change my shtick. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Sitting here, it looks like that's dimensional, like it, on the top it gets bumpy. I haven't gotten that. I will bring it closer. It is. It's a bunch of bits of paper. I just sprinkled. I just cut it. Actually, okay. I made my husband, while he was watching TV, cut a whole bunch of paper. I cut little strips. I said, okay, I need you to cut these into little, like, you know, triangle shapes. And so he sat, and I have a, a whole container, like a Tupperware container full of this. And because I made him do it, and he just went to town because he's, I have arthritis in my thumb, so it's a little hard for me to do that. Um, anyway, so for the weeping willow, I just took those little cut up pieces of paper, put a ton of glue, and I just sprinkled them on. Or when I wanted to get them in kind of lines, I would dab my paintbrush into the bowl of, you know, cut up paper. And, Laid it. Uh -huh. And then, of course, dig into it with my fingers because, you know, I do that. Um, and so you're right. It is dimensional. And if you were to feel it, which um, you would feel like some of it even is poking up because it's, you know, I didn't mush it all down. Because it looks so shiny. Well, that's the varnish. That's the varnish. And the varnish is also what brings out the dimension. It really does. The, the shiny gloss varnish helps. If this was a matte varnish, the whole thing would look a lot flatter than it does. 
So when you work in paper, that's what I recommend. And um, this is actually, um, I did a, a almost a sketch, but a little 8x8 eight eight version of this same piece. And it sold from a show years ago. And I've always thought, you know, I need that deserves to be a bigger piece. So that's why I did that one. Any other questions? Yeah. If you ever can't find paper, I have 30 <laughs> bins of paper. Yeah, sure. <laughs> paper Central. Donna, I know. If you all know Donna's art, all the rolled up paper and the yeah. beautiful little cat pieces. I've been saving things for 20 years. Oh, all right. Do you have any blue that's this color? <laughs> I can use it. <laughs> All right, see me after. <laughs> so, um, I think I've babysat that enough. It's probably going to dry just fine. I'm gonna. I usually keep my um, brush in a cup of water, so the because otherwise the glue will dry and ruin it. Um, I've lost a lot of brushes that I accidentally left out. Um, and they aren't, you know, they're not always cheap. I have, I'm fussy about my brushes, even though I'm hard on them. Um, but the, I like the ones that are well made, so they don't shed, you know, yeah. bristles into the, yeah, yeah into the glue. Yeah. Exactly. I have the same concern any painter would that you don't want it leaving junk on your stuff. In fact, one of the reasons I really like being at art, the art studio is that um, I'm no longer plucking cat hairs out of every single piece. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really nice. Are there any other questions? <laughs> you know, yes, you know. Well, <laughs> does DNA doing something hairy. Maybe they can, I can say, you can do a cat DNA test to prove that it's an authentic Wendy Boucher. Um, if there's no other questions, I'll probably just call it a day. I don't really have anything else to show you. Yeah. I just want to make sure I had the, uh, the mediums correct. That soft, uh, that soft gel gloss you have right there. Yes, did soft you gel gloss. Did you cover the canvas with that first, and then you're using it to glue down? The yes. Oil, so it's one product. It's except just one product, for, except for the varnish. This is all I use, and I use, like I said, is it a particular kind it's golden brand. It's called polymer something or other, and it has. It's made for acrylics. But it has, it's got UV in the title, UV and maybe a number, um, because it has UV protection in it. Right, okay. Sunscreen. <laughs> Any other questions? You've been a delightful audience. Wow. I thought I had a voice for you today. All right, thank you so much for having me.